in randomized controlled trials of pain, a, a, a narcotic or an NSAID versus a placebo, you're going to get a placebo effect. It's always going to be less than the real drug if it's a real good drug. Otherwise, it wouldn't be on the market as a real drug. Uh, nonetheless, those effects can be big. Um, another study that we did um, with irritable bowel patients, also a much larger study, we, were, we actually tried to see if we could increase the components, incrementally increase the components of the placebo effect. Incre make one placebo and then a bigger placebo and then a bigger placebo, like a dose-dependent study. Um, and <clears throat> see if we could really make a big placebo and then a middle placebo. And this is a way of actually testing if it's real, if you can get a dose-dependent relationship. So uh, we did irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, as, as the patients in the study, it was a large study, but 262 patients. And one group had no treatment, just to see maybe, you know, people get better all the time. If you, don't, if you don't go to a doctor, you get better too. That's not a placebo effect, right? Um, that's just yeah. waxing and waning disease. So we had a group that nothing was done, so we could see people get better for all the time just by yeah. staying home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and then we gave uh, the second group, we gave them placebos but no doctor-patient relationship. We gave them placebo uh, acupuncture, actually, and with a needle that went up the shaft instead of down the shaft, off the needle points. And the acupuncturist told the patient, this is a study of, of, of acupuncture. We can't, I'm told not to talk to you for the rest of the study because then I would influence the effect we have. And if you have any questions, talk to the study doctor, study nurse, or the coordinator. And it was just a, a ritual of giving needles, okay? The third arm was they had the same intake, they had the same fake acupuncture, but then they had a, what we called an augmented relationship. They had um, attentive listening, uh, repeating the acupuncturist. First of all, the acupuncturist said, so tell me what's wrong. Tell me how you, what's going on here. You know, and, they, and, they act, and, and they did a, a brief medical history, a, a brief psychosocial history. They touched the patient on the pulse or the abdomen. They um, expressed empathy. They expressed confidence. They said, you know, I'm so excited to be in a study of acupuncture because I treat people with irritable bowel outside the hospital, and I want to and I want to show the medical community it works, yeah. right? And I, th I think I mentioned that already. They, and they did 20 seconds of thoughtful silence. Let me think about this. For, I understand everything. I just want to make sure I understand it. And really, very thick um, doctor-patient relationship with the fake treatment. So you had three different kind of components. Just no treatment with a lot of the questions. We had the intake, the intake questions with fake treatment, intake questions, fake treatment, and a real heavy doctor-patient relationship. And we got this incredible dose-dependent line, and the augmented placebo was as big as any drug that's ever been tested for irritable bowel in history and without the side effects of those major drugs like elacitron and tegacerod. Um, so sometimes you get these big effects, especially in studies I do, because I really want to make big effects because I want to study them, right? Um, I can tell you another study of a size of effects that was interesting. This was a study we published in the New England Journal uh, in 2011 the last summer. And uh, we gave people, we took people off their medications, a small number of people, uh, but we brought them back 10, 12 times. So what we, we did was take them off their asthma medication, so they had a little bit of asthma, right? And we brought them back 12 times. We did this 12 times. And uh, four of the times, um, th three of the times, we gave them albuterol, a regular inhalator that works to get rid of asthma, right? A bronchial dilator. Three of the times, in random order, we gave them fake albuterol, yeah, but there's nothing in it, right? So it's a fake uh, inhalator. Three of the times, we gave them fake acupuncture. Acupuncture that really wasn't, really like, it didn't penetrate it, didn't go near the points. And three of the times, we, this is, each patient was brought, down, brought back 12 times, and three of the times, they just sat there for two and a half hours as a no treatment control, because people's asthma does get better. And um, what happened was that there are two measures that we use. One, FEE1, um, how much uh, air is in the lungs. It's measured as an objective measure in one second, how much is pushed out. And we got 20% improvement with the real drug, 7% improvement with the fake drug inhalator, 7% improvement with the fake acupuncture, and 7% improvement just sitting there. There was no placebo effect.
Okay. Zero. So I remember the asthma doctor said to me, Ted, this is terrible. We worked so hard and nothing happened. This is like, what a disaster. <coughs> and I said, I said to our statistician, John, pull out the numbers on the other note. I think something may have happened. But, so we got for these subjective outcomes, the patient-centered outcomes, how much, how much improvement do you feel? How much less distress do you have? What level of improvement do you get? With the real drug, 50% improvement. With the fake drug, 50% improvement. With the fake acupuncture, 50% improvement. And with the no treatment, 20%. The fake ritual, the ritual treatment, was as good as a drug on subjective outcomes. Um, and that suggests that, as I said earlier, that um, the punch of the placebo is going to be in subjective improvements, patient-centered improvements. But it also says the, the level of placebo effects on some measures is as big as the real drug and a real important illness. Um, so, uh, so in fact, um, you, get big, you can get big effects, especially in my business, which is to study them. I want to get big effects so I can measure and then cut, chop them up and do all kinds of secondary analyses. Um, but obviously, there's not going to be a placebo. You're not going to lower people's cholesterol with a sugar pill. Uh, you may get them to do more exercise or be less tired, and that might uh, cascade into something. Uh, but the there, there's a, a limit, probably, to the, by, uh, what by, uh, placebos can do in terms of a person's sick. Advertising may be about placebo effects. So I can, but I'm not an expert in this thing. But I do want to just say to you that I talk about subjective symptoms, symptoms of self-appraisal. But there's an objective biology that shows that the that those changes in perceptions are not just patients saying I feel better. They actually correlate to changes in neurotransmitters and the neurocircuitry in the brain that uh, of relevant parts of the brain. Meaning that uh, when we give fake needles to subjects and neuroimage of their brain, we see that the certain areas of the brain that modulate emotions and modulate the relation of cognition and sensation are activated, actually uniquely activated during the, when a person feels better with a placebo. And we do know, for example, that um, different kinds of neurotransmitters are involved. We know that for a while now, uh, endorphins are related to certain kinds of pain relief, pain analgesia, uh, allergesia, and um, we do know from recently, um, we saw that another neurotransmitter, uh, CB1 cannabinoids, is involved in other kinds of pain, uh, um, relief of pain with placebos. And dopamine is probably involved, serotonin is involved. So there's a, a biology to our subjective feelings. It's not like this is all made up in your head. It's made up with chemicals and real neurotransmitters. So, so there's a real physiological footprint yeah, of the placebo effect. That's right, that's exactly, thank you for saying it so nicely. I think that it was actually good to be ignored. I was ignored for a long time. And you know, I get, I get a little funding from the NIH and I publish a good study and then I publish another decent study. And uh, people started noticing um, that actually people that my team and people I work with, um, we can do good science studying things that people didn't think you could study with science. Or even good social science. You know, inter we did a lot of qualitative studies. Um, so I think that the field has, has gotten, gained a little bit of credibility, especially with the basic science stuff. Um, and I think it's, it's still, I would say, compared to other disciplines in medicine, like cardiology and oncology, is marginalized because we cut across. It's not like um, we, you know, we do, we're, we're all over the place. But I think there's been re deeper interest, and uh, certainly the public is interested. And I think. Certain fields like psychiatry are desperately interested in understanding the placebo effect because they have trouble showing the drugs being some of the drugs being superior to placebos, and that's true of a lot of central nervous system drugs. So I think it's part of the attempt to humanize uh, healthcare. It, it provides like the, 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 this relevance of the social component, where not just chemicals. Absolutely, chemical. and it's also the relevance of people's own participation in their own health on some level. Um, there's something, pe pe the public likes it because it, it has an element of magic in it, right? Well, see, you can actually go into a special space with another human being and you come out feeling different. We all know that. We've been, uh, and I know lots of people that when they, as soon as they touch the 
aspirin to their tongue, they get completely better, right? Um, uh, with a headache or something. So it's, but I think there's a, a, there's a, there's a growing interest in it, especially since the National Institute of Health is, is really, seem to be willing to fund this stuff. I think there are lots of questions. What illnesses do, does placebo affect? We don't really know completely. How long does the effect last? What are the best ways of delivering it? Can it be done ethically, like a, our, pilot, our proof of principle study? And then the, real, the really important questions around the neurobiology. Um, we don't really understand how come a sugar pill, when you have a headache, is different, uh, affects different neurotransmitters than when you have a stomach ache, or um, how a placebo how, what, how does it work in the brain? We don't understand. We know, we know that certain areas are activated. We don't have a complete picture. We don't know its neurobiology. And a big area that we need to know is what do patients think about this? What, we need to interview patients. Uh, uh, the public needs to weigh in on this. Uh, so there's a lot, lots to be done.